Okay, welcome to episode 5 of the Science of Setup series. In this one we're going to talk about uh, camber and camber gain. Uh, camber gain and camber is all about trying to maintain and optimize the tire contact patch with the racing surface throughout the entire operating range. Now, obviously, there are compromises that you're going to have to maintain, but uh, um, what you want to try and do is maximize the grip as much as possible throughout every condition that the car is going to uh, go through. So before we go on, let's just make sure we all understand uh, what some of the terminology here is. Uh, so static camber, that is the uh, camber that you set while your car is sitting on the bench. So nothing's moving, it's just uh, sitting on your setup stand or on your uh, workbench. Uh, camber gain is the amount that the camber changes when you displace the chassis and move the suspension arms. So you can see here the chassis is shown displaced by some amount and the camber has changed. So in this case it went to 2.8 minus 2.8 degrees from minus 2. So that gives us a camber gain of minus 2 minus minus 2.8 or 0.8 of a degree for that given displacement that we uh, use to uh, calculate the, the camber gain. So why do we want camber gain? Well as the chassis rolls uh, the tire will lose camber. So the tire is, if the tire is leaned over the way it's shown here, uh, as the chassis rolls, the tire is going to want to try and stand up more vertically. And in a lot of cases, you may not want that because the tire needs to have some camber in it because the uh, tire carcass uh, uh, deforms under lateral load. So that's the definition. Um, there's sort of three different uh, uh, configurations, I guess, if you want to call them that, that you can look at for camber gain. Uh, illustrated them here. So there's arms parallel. So when the upper and lower arms are parallel, there is very low camber gain, and essentially zero camber gain. Uh, and that will produce the most camber change in the tire as the chassis rolls. So then we've got the condition where our upper arm is angled slightly relative to the lower arm. And that gives you a moderate level of camber change. So it's trying to counteract uh, somewhat the, the uh, effect of the tire wanting to stand up as the chassis rolls. And then we've got the very steep angled. Uh, this is what you would normally see on a foam tire car. Uh, because they need to try and uh, there's very little uh, deformation in the uh, tire itself so they need to try and keep the camber changes to a minimum. This sort of a configuration here uh, you would see you know typically on uh, rubber tire cars, touring cars, uh, off-road buggies, uh, that sort of thing. Okay so let's get into some real-world examples here. Uh, first thing <laughs> I want to show is some differences between the typical cars that we run. So uh, let's have a look at the most extreme case first. So our eight scale uh, on-road car. So if we look on the setup page here, uh, you can see that uh, this uh, setup has uh, quite a bit of static camber, minus three degrees, and it also has an awful lot of camber gain. Uh, normally I set the camber when I'm looking at camber gain, I'll set the uh, uh, chass <coughs> chassis displacement about 50% of what the uh, um, ride height is. So let's just set this at 4 degrees. So you can see here we're going to get for a 4 millimeter displacement of the chassis down, we're going to get 1.28 degrees of camber change. So that's very, uh, very significant. Uh, the next sort of level, if we look at our 10 scale touring car, <coughs> Uh, it's got a little bit of camber gain, this one not a whole ton. Uh, normally I would run more than that in a, in a touring car, but that's what this model is set up for. Um, so significantly less than uh, what was in the uh, 8 scale on-road car. 
uh, because we are running with rubber tires here. And lastly, let's look at uh, uh, eight scale Truggy. So Truggy here again, you know, we've only got half a degree of camber change for 15 degrees of chassis displacement. So that's not a whole lot of uh, camber change. Uh, again, see the arms are fairly close to parallel. So there is not going to be a whole bunch of uh, camber gain in this vehicle. So the tires likely need to have a lot of uh, uh, camber change to maintain uh, maximum uh, grip with the track. Okay, so how do we change our camber gain values? Uh, quite simple, we just change the angles and lengths of our upper camber link. That's one way to do it. You can also move your uh, lower arm around as well. Uh, but the upper link has the most effect on uh, camber gain. So we want to increase our camber gain. So let's go down and lower this link. So now we've increased the angle of the arm downward. Uh, and we've gone from 0.58 of a degree to 1.1 degree. Now we can also shorten this upper link. Because the shorter the link is, the more camber gain you're going to have and so now you can see we've gone to 1.3631 degrees. Uh, the other thing to take note of here is in doing this we've changed our roll center and the, the effect of change in the roll center has changed our chassis roll sensitivity. So the chassis overall roll stiffness of the chassis is a little bit higher than what it was before. So the chassis will have slightly less roll in it. Uh, not a huge amount, but just be aware of that. Okay, let's have a look at what happens to camber as uh, the chassis rolls. I'm not going to save these changes because I don't want to. Whoops, went the wrong way. I want to leave. <clears throat> so we're going to go to uh, the same model. Uh, I want to look at the rear suspension because that's what we've been looking at. And I want to see how much my camber gain changes, how much of an effect they have on my camber when I get out to the higher uh, G loadings. So first thing I want to do is I just want to point out where we are starting from. So <clears throat> the outside tire at one and a half G's is going to have about 2.75 degrees of positive camber. Uh, the inside tire is going to have about negative 6 degrees of negative camber. And you can see this if you look at the, uh, the animation. So you can see here as the chassis rolls on the, uh, 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 on the outside tire, <laughs> we go out to almost 3 degrees there, positive, and on the inside tire we're between 6 and 7 degrees negative. So let's see what happens now when we start adding camber gain. What we want to do is we want to try and reduce the amount of camber change that we see in the tire. So let's do exactly what we just did in the on the setup page. I'm just going to change this to there. Shorten the upper link and apply that. So now you can see our graph is updated here. And let's see. Now we've gone from 2.75 to 1.64 degrees. So a little more than a one degree improvement in uh, in the camber and on the inside wheel side we've gone to minus 5.79 so and again if you animate this you can see the see the effect these little red bars show the extents so you can see that we're just a little over one degree one and a half degrees there positive and we're not quite minus six negative so the other thing to think or to notice here is that the range between the camber on the outside wheel and on the inside wheel is also reduced. Uh, the camber difference <clears throat> with the setup that we started with uh, was uh, about 
Yeah, I wrote it down here. It was about uh, 9.1 degrees was the difference between the uh, outside and inside tire. Now we are in the order of 7.4 degrees. So that's 1.7 degrees narrower range between the inside and outside tire, uh, which should help improve grip. Uh, assuming that that's what this tire wants, because as we said at the beginning, it's all about what the tire needs to maintain grip with the uh, with the racing surface. Okay, um, what I want to show now. So if you remember how much of a camber change or camber range we had there, let's go and look at the uh, Camber King which is the Nitro on-road car, and let's see how much difference there is in the um, uh, camber on it. So uh, let's look at the rear. <laughs> so the rear is the one that has the highest camber gain values. So you can see here that at 1.5 Gs, We've got 2.69 to get this to click in to 3.48. So we've got less than one degree of uh, range in the camber between the inside and outside tire. And the reason for that is because these tires are very stiff, uh, you don't want a whole bunch of camber change because otherwise you're just going to be rolling through a, a huge range on the tire surface. And that's not going to be good for tire wear or grip or anything. Okay, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to say in this episode. I'm trying to keep them as short as I can uh, so I don't put you to sleep. Um, so up next, we're going to talk about in episode six, we're going to look at the uh, roll center and camber game relationship and uh, what happens when you uh, change one and affect the other. Uh, so stay tuned. <laughs>